everybody, and welcome to today's edition of Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art from the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. I'm Bill Perthes, the Bernard C. Watson Director of Adult Education, and my colleagues and I are taking some time selecting works from the collection of the Barnes Foundation, some of our favorite works, and sharing our thoughts about them with you. Um, it's our way of staying connected both to the collection that we love, uh, as well as to folks like you who appreciate art or are longing as we are to once again see the see our collection. Uh, so this is a way of sort of holding us over until we're all able to do that again. Uh, today, I've chosen a picture by William Glackens. It's called Wo Wo Woman with Umbrella, Washington Square, and it was created uh, around 1910. Uh, in an earlier Barnes Takeout, I talked about William Glackens painting the racetrack from 1908-1909. Um, if you uh, didn't have a chance to see that, you can go back and, and watch it. Um, and I, I mentioned that that picture was a, a real pivotal turning point for, for Glackens. Um, so this picture was done a little bit later, a year or so later, um, and uh, it really captures another really important aspect of William, the work of William Glackens. Um, so this is a, um, a work on paper. It's both uh, graphite as well as oil pastel. Um, and it's a kind of uh, middle ground for, for Glackens. And what I mean by that is it's between a, a sketch or a drawing of which he was very well known for doing um, and a painting, which was another medium that he uh, he was uh, very, very popular uh, with. Um, but Glackens actually got his start as an illustrator. Um, so William Glackens was born in Philadelphia. Uh, he went to Central High School with Albert Barnes. And uh, in high school, Glackens had the reputation for drawing uh, witty caricatures of their instructors. Uh, Barnes and uh, Glackens shared a love of baseball uh, that allowed them to bond. Um, and after Barnes went out into the business world and uh, began to make some money, he reconnected with, with Glackens. In those intervening years, Glackens established himself as um, a, a, an illustrator reporter for newspapers in Philadelphia. So this is before uh, photographs were uh, able to be printed in, in newspapers, and instead news, newspapers hired artists, sketch artists, to go out to uh, news events and capture images. And then those images would be brought back and they would be transferred into the, into the newspaper. And amongst his colleagues, uh, Glackens gained a reputation for being one of the most adept at being able to draw figures. Um, he really focused on the movement and characteristics. He was able very uh, economically to capture the essence of, of, a, of a figure uh, in simple drawing. He then went on uh, to establish himself, as I said earlier, as a painter. And I think very much what Barnes appreciated in Glacken's work is that he understood the difference and the different responsibilities of an artist working as, as an illustrator in line and value or as a, as a painter working in color. Uh, but in this, this work, again, so this is both uh, illustration as well as oil pastel, we see Glackens sort of navigating nicely between those two. I mentioned that this is, that the title of this is William, wi Woman with Umbrella, uh, Washington Square, because in 1896, uh, Glackens resettled in New York, eventually finding a studio on Washington Square. And I suspect one of the reasons that uh, he chose that location is that it, it gave him ready access to to Washington Square and all of the people that would congregate and gather or move through uh, that square so that he could literally just look at his studio window and be able to to see that. And 
uh, this illustration has a bit of an a bit of an elevated vantage point. Um, and it may have been the case that at least some of it, or perhaps the idea of it, came to him as he was looking out of, out of his his studio window. Uh, his son Ira regularly, uh, or his son Ira uh, wrote that uh, William Glackens would never leave the house without carrying a sketchbook and a pencil with him. In fact, he had a very particular kind of pencil that he preferred to use uh, that had that gripped the paper uh, in a in a way that he that he really wanted what it, it had what he called tooth. Um, and uh, he would capture. So let me show you in the collection. So here we are um, in gallery 17 and we're facing east. This is a uh, gallery 17 is one of the the rooms in the Barnes Foundation that is um, almost exclusively or largely um, filled with works on paper. There are some paintings, so you see this work by, by Henri Matisse. But our, our drawing, you'll see it's very modest in scale, is here. It's surrounded by works by other American artists, including Charles Demuth below, Francis McCarthy, uh, a local artist, another uh, Demuth above, and a Pennsylvania German fractor above. The work over the over the door is by Jules Pascal. Um, but so here's our here's the picture that we're talking about. Let me put it back into, and if we go back to it, here we see it full. And I wanted to show you not just that, but this little drawing. So this is actually in gallery 20. Let me show you that. Well, this is even of a more modest scale. This is another one of the galleries uh, really dominated by works on paper. So you'll see several drawings by, by Glackens here. Here, here are two of them side by side. And here's the little one that I just showed you. And in this little sketch, I think you can see how just through a, a series of simplified lines, and not simplified, but simple lines, Glackens is able to really capture the essence of this figure's movement, right? The particular sway of the of the cloth, the transfer of weight from one foot to to another, the sense of gait of the of the figure. And if we go back to our work, it's not too dissimilar to this figure here, walking in a different direction, um, but again, capturing that sense of, of animation, of physical move, movement through space. Um, so, and if we look at other figures in this, in this picture, you can see how each one has a kind of individual quality to them. So it's not, it's not as if they are individuals themselves, so he's not really focusing on uh, facial features, for instance, they're kind of types, um, but each of them have a particular way of standing or moving or um, interacting with with another figure. Uh, and I would say that's even true of the horse and carriage uh, in the in the middle distance. Um, even the sense of the gait of the horses through just an economy of lines, Glackens is able to to capture that. Um, but this is, so this, one of the primary things about this picture that Glackens is, is trying to capture is the sense of movement through space of figures. And this vantage point gives us a really nice um, sort of pathway, literally a pathway to, that carries our eye into the distance. Um, you'll notice that the pathway sort of snakes through the picture. But as it does so, interestingly, you'll notice that we're almost always moving behind the tree with the, the tree here in the foreground with this figure in blue. This is the figure with the umbrella that gives the, the picture its title, that we're, we navigate across this, this tree. And what that allows the viewer's eye to do is to both move deep into space as if we ourselves are walking through Washington Square amongst these figures, um, but that that tree and that boldly colored figure in the foreground uh, gives our eye a, a pathway to move back to the to the foreground. 
So he's really mapped out a means of our eye, both traveling through space, but also navigating back to the foreground. And he does that um, not only by way of this, this tree, but also in the, the bold color choice that he gives the figures in the foreground. Um, so you'll notice that he uses the complementary colors of, of red and blue uh, and yellow. So these become uh, really a, attraction points for our eye. Um, but that each figure as we move back becomes a little less distinct. These figures in the, uh, in, again, in the middle distance are just a, a few sketched lines and that the, the scene in the very far distance is, uh, is just a, a, a bit of color, which gives us a hint of the cityscape perhaps, perhaps beyond there. Um, there's a vibrancy and an animation to this picture that um, that really characterizes the best aspect of William Glackin's work. Um, few few artists of his day were able to so immediately capture the quality of figures in motion than were than was William Glackin's, whether it's in line drawing or in pictures. Um, and I will return to Glackin's and uh, paintings by Glackin's in the in the collection in the future. But that's all for me today. I appreciate you you watching. And if you haven't already signed up for um, for our notices of the Barnes Takeout, I strongly encourage you to do so. Also, please leave comments below. We really uh, appreciate hearing from you. Uh, we really want to hear that your response to it. And uh, until tomorrow, uh, take care. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.